Hi, it's Sharon from Vivid Days. Thank you for all my supporters. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'd love for you to make sure you thumbs up, subscribe and share. Comments are always welcome for my videos. I love to get feedback from you and interact with you. Today I'm going to be doing a breakdown and a step-by-step -step tutorial of, of how I create my Hearts of the Ocean. Um, my tutorials seem to do really well and I ask, get, keep getting asked for them. So let's get on with this. But remember, check out my Facebook page. Uh, remember to have a look at my Etsy store if you wanted to purchase any of my work and also uh, if you want to showcase your art with my art community there is a Facebook group that you can join and we would love to support share and share knowledge anyway that's enough of that I'm digressing let's get on with this process but I hope wherever you are in the world you're safe and much love thank you for all your support hey it's Sharon from Vivid Days and we are going to do a step-by-step -step tutorial I have done some preparation to save you time. I, I've got an MDF heart that's from a local place near me that does signage. And you can order sizes and thickness. I like to work on hearts and a decent size thickness with hearts uh, for my hearts of the ocean. And I have primed my underneath. So that has just had two coats of the um, ultramarine. So dark ultramarine acrylics. Um, and then what I'm going to do is put masking tape around the edge to help with my resin nipples and we are going to construct the design. Now you can prime your boards, MDF, however you want in the normal way, gesso, everything like that. I like to do it with my acrylic paints of the colours that I'm going to use in my resin because you can see through, you get your layers, you get your depths and it helps me connect with the piece and understand where I'm going to put my resin. But that's a personal choice. Use whatever acrylics um, you have around you or prime your board however you want. This one from um, top to bottom is 30 centimetres diagonal by uh, the biggest width, 30. <laughs> uh, just a little under 2 centimetres thickness. But I am going to keep this piece where I'm going to have my beach down here. And then I'm just going to have the ocean lapping onto the beach gently. And I'm just going to use two tones of the green blue. But I'll get on with this painting and I'll show you what colours I've used at the end. And I will speed this up for your time. Remember to check my descriptions for all products used. And that'll be in the bottom right hand corner. And remember the top right hand corner will have hopefully more other videos that you will enjoy. But other than that, watch my process and I'll be back to talk about it shortly. So we've finished now priming our board and mapping out our composition. The colours I ended up using to create the sand, I wanted a little bit of bronze shimmer in there. So this one is iridescent copper and also the uh, ivory buff titanium, both Peebo. And for my ocean, it is basically turquoise blue with some white in there. And underneath, as I showed you, it was the ultramarine dark. What I'm going to do now is let this cure. Um, when I say cure, let it dry out. Time will depend on country you're in or how many layers. I'm going to see how it dries and see whether I need to do a second coat. Uh, the reason you want to make sure you've primed your board because MDF will constantly release bubbles into your resin. So the more primed it is, the better your resin 
will not, should I say, the better you are. Yeah, less bubbles you'll get in there. Anyway, Sharon, show up digressing. <laughs> Uh, and then what the plans are is two layers of resin will go on here and the white even though I've marked it halfway down here will come over here but I'm going to put clear just with white so you see it breaking over the sand and then it'll break over to the blue so I'm keeping this one quite simple I'm not envisaging lots of big churning waves which is what I normally do I'm more going to go for that webbing and tranquility all right, I will see you in a blink of an eye when this is fully dried and we start with our resin. So I'm mixing it up a little bit, I'm doing something slightly different. I did apply a second coat and I just want to show you close up what that looks like. So around the edges, I've graduated where the tones meet all the way around. So I'm going to keep it simple with a one tone ocean and there'll be white froth. And then I added the really nice bronze for the sand you might not be able to see in that light because that's going to be under the ocean and there is going to be the white waves going over it then it's going to graduate onto this lighter sand that's not been touched by the ocean and i'm going to add a little bit of sand but only a little bit and yeah but it's a really nice big size i'm hoping that simplicity on this one will win but it needed a second coat and I now cannot see any trace of the MDF. I think that's going to help protect the board when my resin goes over. But we're off to that now. So I'm going to mix up 300 mils of resin and then I'll show you what I'm going to add from a colour point of view. Okay, so this is layer one done. It's not gone quite how I expected it to go or how I'd like it to go, but I am going to show you this because this is just layer one. 
Um, I think that my table or where I've put this has become unlevel. So you can see that you get the movement of your waves where you don't want them to be. But this is a different piece for me and I am actually enjoying the churning part here. I think what I'm not enjoying is the difference between here and here. But the second layer can fix this. I can bring a bit more blue here and cover up some of this and a little bit here and graduate because it just seems so solid and then nothing but a the froth of the wave. So I feel like there's something missing. Anyway, you saw me going around the edges. Sorry for my drip offs. So I will scoop all that up and put it as a base layer on something else. But you go around and around and try and make sure resin is touching all the sides of that MDF board just to help seal it. And if you go around and around as well, you're stopping your resin nipples coming down, which can pull it off the top. So be prepared to do that. Look for dust particles. Look for anything you're unhappy with. Stay with it until it's starting to cure. I'm going to cover this up with a lid now. And you get to a stage where you realise I can do no more with this first layer. I am just going to leave it because there are beautiful aspects of it. And I really do believe that I can salvage it on layer two. So, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to show you the wall there. Uh, but I put my gloves here because when I put my box over the top of it, it's going to stop it sticking to the resin. And I've got a little bit of resin left that I'm going to use for some of my moulds. Anyway, I'm Sharon. I'm digressing. I will see you in 24 hours where we'll do the next layer. And see if we can finish this but i really am enjoying that churning motion there all right then see you soon bye hey it's shown from vivid days this is the day later and i've come back to have a look at it and i definitely need to rescue this but this is why i i'm still showing this video with you to show you that never give up because your base layer even though it might be wrong can add a lot of value i have made sure that my board is level this time it was slightly hanging to the right so i've counteracted that with a stick the back bit disappointed I've got a few things on the back there but overall it's still there and the sides now have a nice little coat of resin so I am going to stop speaking now I'll just doubly make sure that that is level yeah so what I'm going to do to evolve this is I want a little bit more of the blue coming through here but not a lot but I do want it to look like you can see that wave rolling forward. And this one, I'm just going to try and have a little bit of web in here. But I am going to add a tiny little bit of the dark blue there, cyan blue, and try and blend that in just so it does look like it's going out there uh, and there's a little bit more movement in the ocean. Only a little bit. I might blend it in with my fingers. This time, I'm only going to mix up 150 ml of resin because 200 ml was too much last time. Uh, but if I do have any left, I will use some mold. So the principle's the same. I'll fast forward this. You don't need to hear me speak. I am going to add a little bit more Super Sparkle White to my um, resin. And it will be a little bit of casting craft, but I am actually going to put in a little bit of the alcohol ink as well at this area here to see what that does. Uh, some people have been using it and they've been commenting on how it gives beautiful webbing and cells. So I'm going to try that. Uh, you don't need to sand this down because it's only been 24 hours since I've last worked with it. So it's going to adhere to it lovely. So... Let's get on with this. Anyway, before I do that, let me show you some of the nice parts. I do enjoy this churning ocean here. The bronze, um, I think if I get some blue under there in the webbing, that's going to look nice. I'm going to lose a little bit of sand area, but that's okay. We'll, we'll make it richer by having some more webbing coming back. But that super sparkle white from the Colour Cottage just adds so much to it. Anyway. I am now going to get on with it. Come on, Sharon, mix up that resin. Roger, Roger.
so this is now how I envisage this piece finishing. However, I do enjoy it. I'm actually thinking about bringing a little bit more foam in there, but I think the break might leave it. Anyway, shut up, Sharon. <laughs> I'm going to just check for dust particles. Um, my runoff is even. So that makes me happy that it's not all going to fall off because I don't want to uh, ruin my sand area. And again, I will scoop up this uh, resin and put it in one of my moulds. But let's go over. So that blue that I added there will continue to keep blending in. And the reason I came in and added some more white on top of my waves is to give you that definition, hopefully of 3D. So you're getting your white caps and you're getting the different blues underneath as that ocean's moving and churning. And yeah, I love this. So I'm going to take a photo of it, see how I feel. You might find that I come in with a little line here just to try and bring it together. But I've got my three waves rolling in to the ocean and yeah, loving it. Okay, I hope that the resin gods are going to be kind. I'll cover this up. I'm just going to check for dust particles and then I'll show you the end result. Never give up. Hi, it's Sharon from Vivid Days. Decided to come back and do a final thin top coat which is just going to have 150 mils of resin there may be some left over and i've just added my super sparkle white because that makes my ocean glisten and i love it and add a tiny little bit of the casting craft and all i am going to do so i've made sure my board is level i have sanded back my resin because it's been two weeks while i've been deciding what to do with this so that's all level it's sanded and cleaned back and i'm going to just bring some more white from here so it'll be all clear down here and some white here just a little bit here and just see if i can get a little bit more brushing back it's just this part here there's just something about it it's a bit disjointed it's not going to take a lot to fix i hope i'm praying to the fi <laughs> fingers god i'm pressing to the resin god though i am not going to destroy this but um it's worth the risk and i wanted to share it with you anyway I'm Sharon, I'm digressing. This should be the final stage and then we should be in for review. Now, what I am going to do is with my heat gun, I'll have it on 400, but I've got my nozzle. You're going to see me stood towards the side because I'm just going to air it just to that little bit there uh, and push it back. So hopefully this is going to work as I imagine it in my head. So I'll fast forward it to save you a little bit of time. But other than that, I'm going to breathe. <sighs> Please be kind.
All right, working on a clean space. This has cured quite a while. I'm going to show you how I remove my resin nipples. Most of this isn't in view, but you'll get my drift. This is about putting your heat gun on. I will work it backwards and forwards for about 10 seconds and pull a little bit up. And your uh, masking tape and your nipples should come away like that. If you've got a little bit of resistance, you might want a little bit of a uh, tool to help pull it off and watch your nails. But just work backwards and forwards, work in a well-ventilated area, wear a mask, and slowly this will come up. So I set mine on 400, and I am going to turn this fan down low. But I'll switch this on fast forward now to save you some time. And here we go. Already knocking my camera. Brilliant. We've made it, we're at the end. And for all the people that's watched this full process the whole way through, thank you for all of your support. It means the world to me. Um, and whilst this piece isn't how I envisaged it going, sometimes art takes you on a journey. And even though it's not what you thought it was gonna be, something magical can come out. And there's so many things I love about this, but mainly the depth, the movement, the colors, and that little bit of sparkle. Hello, Zeus is hanging out with me there. Anyway, thumbs up, subscribe, share, comments are always welcome. Pop over to my Etsy store. This piece is available and who knows, you might find some other treasures there that you enjoy. And join my Facebook group. I'd love to see your creations, especially if I inspire you. But remember, you also inspire me. So share your work and let's keep giving back to the creative community. Sorry, Zeus is having a little bark. Anyway, see you on the next video. Much love and I hope wherever you are in the world, you are safe.